Today has both a lesson and a reflection. The lesson is the sin of Moses in today's scripture, and the reflection is of a saint named Dominic in today's world. When reading the scripture of Moses' travails with the tribes of Jews, the incident at Meribah is that which is least understood without instruction, without having read the Jewish Pentateuch. When hearing and simply reading today's first reading, did you pick up on the single word symbolizing the sin of Moses, showing his lack of faithfulness to the Almighty? In the Hebrew version of these 13 verses, there are two words which foretell it. The word foretelling of the unfaithfulness is the word twice. Quote, Raising his hand, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out. Quote, quote. Because Moses had not sufficient faith to work the miracle of the Lord by striking, striking the rock but once. As directed in the other versions, quote, in the presence of the community, order the rock to yield its waters by striking it with your staff once, and the rock shall re yield its waters. Close quote. So were the waters, so the waters were named Meribah, which means contention, from Kaddish, which means sanctified, O holy place. There are those who dedicate their lives serving in the scope of the Matthew Gospel 25, 31, 46. And yes, I have been misquoting that as 35, 46. Seeing to the unending needs of those least souls, those people of greatest spirit and deepest humility, but of whom the world's most powerful target with their slings and arrows. One such angel is today's, is named for today's saint, Dominic Boza, who all but runs the Minneapolis Salvation Army Shelter and Homeless Services Program at 1010 Curry Avenue, Minneapolis. He will tell you how many hundreds of staff run it, and how there are people above him, a named director, and a figurehead, my word, not his, for drawing in those big books from the large foundations and the big donors who won't give to those in the trenches. There are so many souls lost each year to the diseases of poverty and the mental illnesses which are concomitant in portions of the homeless population. But the face of the homeless person is not now the typified derelict drunk or addict lying in the gutter or the park, panhandling for their next fix, the next high, or the next bottle of alcoholic wine or scope mouthwash, strained through day-old bread. Remember, I used to work with alcoholics. No. The face of homelessness is now an eight-year-old child that lives in a shelter with their family and cries each night silently so mom or pop can't hear and worry. But they, too, are also crying in the agony of their body's pain as they work worthless jobs for endless hours only to spend 27 to 32 percent on taxes. There are never tax breaks for the poor, ever. 12% on transportation to and from work each day because there are never breaks in the fees and fares for the poor. And then 12% on shelter. Yes, they pay to stay in the homeless shelters. This leaves nothing to be saved up for the future apartment. This is the world of Trump. This is the post-recovery USA where all programs for the poor have been cut back so greatly that those who are living in shelters are often now not qualifying by income for programs for the poor. And now he wants to cut back the food programs that are already at 1974 budgets for per person poor meal spending. They are under 97 cents per person per meal for a month. For instance, right now I live on bagels and Nutella and one meal of food per day for my funds. 
but that's just me. Imagine feeding a family with children who are growing on that. That is why most children on poverty and the food budget programs are suffering malnutrition. But Dom somehow uses the meager funds from the skin flint and the donations to have reduced the winter death toll in Minneapolis, Minnesota by 473% over 10 years. You didn't know that love, did you? And all of those lives saved, all of those what they call winter suicides, having not been allowed to occur because of his monitoring programs instituted, which are te teams going out in vans to pick up folks, bringing them back to the cooperatives of churches that they've developed over the decades. Churches of every faith, Catholic, Lutheran, Unitarian, Jewish, you name it. There's at least one of every faith in there, from inner city to suburban. They set up bids inside their churches, inside their fellowship halls, inside wherever they have space, even in their offices, to take up these folks practicing Matthew 31, 46, to help these people so that they are not out in the cold. They have some place each night to go to, each night so that they are never out in the cold ever again. Now, what I'd like to do is to read that gospel, Matthew 31, 46, for my friend, Dom, because this is his guiding principle, whether he will admit it or not. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate from them, from among them, one another, as the shepherd, shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. A stranger, you welcomed me. Naked, you clothed me. Ill, you cared for me. In prison, you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will turn to those on his left. Depart from me, you accursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. A stranger, you gave me no welcome. Naked, you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison? and we did not minister to your needs. And he will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment. But the righteous, those on the right, to eternal life. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you.